They're headed right for us. Chapter 3, in which Mallory finally gets to put a rapier to good use. Through the small hole in the stone, Jared saw goblins. There were five of them, all with faces like frogs and eyes that were dead white with no pupil at all. Hairless, cat-like ears stuck up from their heads, and their teeth were pieces of shattered glass and small jagged rocks. Their green, bloated bodies moved swiftly over the lawn. One held a stained sack while the rest scented the air like dogs, moving in the direction of the carriage house. Jared backed away from the window, almost tripping on an old bucket. <laughs> They're headed right for us, he whispered, ducking down. Mallory gripped her foil more tightly, uh, knuckles white. What, what about Simon? I didn't see him. She lifted up her head and peered outside. I don't see anything, she said. Jared crouched down with the stone clutch in his palm. He could hear the goblins outside, grunting and shuffling as they got closer. He didn't dare look through the stone again. Then Jared heard the sound of old wood snapping. A rock hit one of the windows. They're coming, Jared said. He shoved the guide into his backpack, not bothering to buckle it. Coming? Mallory replied. I think they're here. Claws scraped at the side of the barn and little barks came from beneath the window. Jared's stomach turned to lead. He couldn't move. We have to do something, he whispered. Um, We're going to have to make a run for the house, Mallory whispered back. We can't, Jared said. The memory of the goblin's jagged teeth and claws wouldn't leave him. A couple more planks and they'll be inside. He nodded numbly, numbly, stealing himself to rise. Fumbling, he tried to fit the stone into into the eyepiece and attach it to his head. The clip pinched his nose. On my mark, said Mallory. One, two, three, go. She opened the door and they both sprinted toward the house. Goblins hurled after them. Clawed hands caught at Jared's clothes. He wrenched free and ran on. Mallory was faster. She was almost to the door of the house when a goblin caught the back of Jared's shirt and pulled hard. He went down on his stomach in the grass. The stone flew out of the monocle. He dug his fingers into the dirt, holding on as much as he could, but he was being dragged backward. He could... F- Goblin. <sighs> he could feel the clasp on his pack loosening, and he screamed. Mallory turned. Instead of running on toward the house, she started running back to him. Her fencing sword was still in her hand, but there was no way she could know what she was up against. He was being dragged backward. Mallory! Jared shouted, No! Run away! At least one goblin must have gone past him because he saw Mallory's arm jerk and heard her cry out. Red lines appeared where nails scraped her. The headphones were ripped free from her neck. She spun and lashed out with the rapier, dealing a sting blow to the air. It didn't seem like she had hit anything. She swung the sword in an arc, but again, nothing. Jared kicked out hard with one of his legs, striking something solid. He felt the grip that held him slip, and he pulled himself forward, yanking his backpack out of their grasp. The contents spilled out, and Jared was barely able to snatch up the guide in time. Reaching around the grass, he picked up the stone and scrambled to where Mallory was. Then he brought the stone to his eye and looked. Six o'clock, he shouted, and Mallory whirled, striking in that direction, catching a goblin across the ear. It howled. Rapier blades didn't have points, but they sure stung when they hit. Shorter, they're shorter, Jerry managed to Jerry managed to pull himself from his feet so, so that he was standing with his back against Mallory's. All five goblins were circling them. One lunge from the right. Three o'clock, Jared shouted. Mallory knocked the goblin to the ground easily. Twelve o'clock, nine o'clock, seven o'clock. They were rushing all at once, and Jared didn't think Mallory could possibly manage. He had to the field guide and, and, and swung it as hard as he could at the nearest goblin. Thwack! The book hit the goblin hard enough to send it sprawling backward. (sighs) 
All five goblins were circling them. <sighs> Mallory had knocked down two more with hard blows. Now they circled more warily, gnashing teeth of glass and stone. There was a strange call, like a cross between a bark and a whistle. At that sound, the goblins retreated one by one into the woods. Jerry collapsed onto the grass. His side hurt and he was out of breath. They're gone, Jared said. He held up the stone to Mallory. Look! Mallory sat down next to him and held it up to her eye. I don't see anything, but, but I didn't see anything a minute ago either. They still might come back, Jared Jared rolled over and, and opened the guide, flipping through the pages quickly. Read this. Goblins travel in roving bands looking for trouble. Mallory scowled at the words. And look, Jared, cats and dogs missing is a sign that goblins are, are in the area. They exchanged a glance. Tibbs, Jared said with a shudder. Mallory read on. Goblins are born without teeth and so find substitutes, such as the fangs of animals, sharp rocks, and pieces of glass. But it doesn't say anything about how to stop them, said Jared, or where they might have taken Simon. Mallory didn't look for, up from the page. Jared tried to keep his mind from imagining what the goblin uh, might want with Simon. It seemed pretty obvious to him what they didn't, what they did with the cats and dogs, but he didn't want to believe that his brother could be could be eaten. His gaze fell on the illustration of those horrible teeth. Surely not. Surely there was some other explanation. Mallory took a deep breath and pointed to the illustration. It's going to be dark soon, and with eyes like that, they probably have better night vision than we do. That was pretty smart. Jerry resolved to write a note <laughs> and the guide about it when they got Simon back. He took off the eyepiece and slid the stone into place again, but the clamps were too loose to hold it. It doesn't work, Jared said. You have to adjust it, said Mallory. We need a screwdriver or something. <laughs> Jared took a pocket knife from the back pocket of his pants. It had a screwdriver, a little knife, a magnifying glass, a file, bent scissors, and a place where there had been once been a toothpick. Screwing down the clamps carefully, he fitted the stone into place. Here, let me tie it on your head right. Mallory knotted the leather straps until the monocle apparatus was on tight. Jared had to squint a, a little to see properly, but it was much better than before. Take this, Mallory said, and handed him a practice rapier. The end wasn't pointed, though, so he wasn't sure how much real damage he could do. Time to find Simon. Still, it felt better to be armed. Tucking the guide into his backpack, tightening the straps, and holding the sword in front of him, Jared stared back down the hill into the darkening woods. It was time to find Simon. <laughs>